Are you new to Italian prepositions or do you just need a refresher? Well, I'll be sharing with you everything you need to know about all the different Italian prepositions. Plus, I'll be sharing plenty of real world examples. By the way, you don't have to take any notes either. To help you practice, make sure you download your free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson. It includes all the vocabulary, grammar, and examples that I'm going to cover here today. Just click on the link in the description below this video. Pronti? Iniziamo! To make sure we're all on the same page, what are prepositions? Well, simply put, the term preposition literally means something put before, and it is a key part when you're learning Italian. A preposition is a word or a short phrase that explains how something relates to the rest of the sentence. Examples of some English prepositions include at, for, with, into, from, in front of, and near to. As in English, Italian prepositions are placed before a noun or a pronoun and connect two pieces of information. For example, I'm at home. It's for her, she's on the train, and it's in front of him. So today in this lesson, we'll focus on how to use each Italian preposition and where to place it within a sentence. Let's take a look at the most common prepositions in Italian and their general meanings. I say general because their meanings may vary, which we will explore more in detail. Now these are called simple prepositions, and they are a to, at, di, of, da, from, in, in, su, on, con, with, per, for. When these simple prepositions, so a, di, da, in and su, are followed by the definite article, that is il, la, i and le and so on, they combine or contract with the definite article to form one word. Now these are called articulated prepositions. Remember this term, articulated prepositions. For example, a plus il together become al. You can think of this contraction like the English it is becomes its. The reason why we do this is because it helps with phonetics and contributes to the flow and melody of the Italian language. So let's take a look at a chart of these contracted Italian prepositions or articulated prepositions. Now this chart shows all the possible variations for the prepositions that we saw earlier when they're simple form and the articulated prepositions for each one. Now, once upon a time in Italian, the prepositions con and per were combined with their definite article to form the variations of col and pel and so on. This is now a thing of the past. However, in spoken Italian, you may still hear this combined with the definite article. Matteo deve parlare col suo capo. Matteo has to speak to his boss. Now here are some examples of Italian sentences using the prepositions that we've just seen in this chart. Lei si guarda sempre allo specchio. She's always looking at herself in the mirror. Silvia è scesa dal treno. Silvia got off the train. Literally, Silvia came down from the train. I passaporti sono sul tavolo. The passports are on the table. Uno per uno. One by one. Con le buone o con le cattive. Come hell or high water, no matter what it takes. Now this is an idiomatic expression which literally means with the good or with the bad. Ho le farfalle nello stomaco. I have butterflies in my stomach. This is an idiomatic expression for feeling nervous or excited. If you want to learn more Italian idiomatic expressions, watch this video here. Voglio visitare la Galleria degli Uffizi a Firenze. I want to visit the Uffizi Gallery in Florence. Literally, I want to visit the Gallery of the Uffizi. Now, there are many other prepositions which you should also familiarize yourself with. These include con, with, senza, di, without, attraverso, across, through, contro, di, against, Dietro, di, behind, 
davanti a, in front of, accanto a, beside, next to, di fronte a, opposite, in fondo a, at the bottom of, sopra, di, above, sotto, under, below, oltre, beyond, in mezzo a, in the middle of, dopo, di, after, prima, di, before, entro, by, a point in time. For example, dobbiamo finire entro domani. We have to finish by tomorrow. Tra, fra, between. Now these have exactly the same meaning and can be used interchangeably. So when do you use each preposition in Italian? Quite often, the preposition you use in Italian will be similar to what you would say in English. However, many of them may not be what you expect. One example is that a, the preposition a in Italian, can mean to, in, at, or even on in some cases. For example, Vogliono venire al mare? Do they want to come to the beach? Abito a Londra. I live in London. Roberto è al telefono. Robert is on the phone. Then there are certain prepositions used with Italian verbs that relate to a specific place. For example, arrivare, to arrive, is always followed by the preposition a, meaning to or at or in, when referring to a city. But when you arrive in a country, you use the preposition in for in. Partire, to leave or to depart, is always followed by the preposition da, meaning from, when leaving a place. When leaving for a place, it is followed by the preposition per, meaning for. Take a look at these examples. Luca parte da Torino alle 5. Luca leaves from Turin at 5 o'clock. Arrivo a Taormina nel pomeriggio. I'm arriving in Taormina in the afternoon. Parto per Roma domani mattina. I leave for Rome tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, there is no one magic rule for learning Italian prepositions. It's just lots of use cases and rules of thumb. So it makes sense for you to learn how they are used as you go along. Now with that said, here are some specific rules that you can learn and apply. Now are you enjoying this lesson so far? Now don't let the learning stop here. Make sure you download your free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson and you'll find a link to that in the description below this video. Now let's start by looking at the preposition a. Now the preposition a is used when talking about being in a town or city. For example, I miei abitano a Torino. My parents live in Turin. Otherwise, in is used if the place is a country. For example, Vivi in Australia? Do you live in Australia? Attenzione! You use the definite article as well as in with countries that are in the plural. For example, Devo andare negli Stati Uniti. I have to go to the United States. Vivono nei Paesi Bassi. They live in the Netherlands. The second usage of the preposition a is with nouns to tell you where something is. For example, Sto alla porta. I'm at the door. Voglio un posto al sole. I want a place in the sun. Ci siamo seduti all'ombra. We sat in the shade. I bambini sono a letto. The children are in bed. The third usage is when talking about going to a place. For example, Sono andato al ristorante. I went to the restaurant. Attenzione! When going to a country, we use in. For example, Vuoi andare in Italia? The fourth way that we use in is when talking about being at a place. For example, Devo essere all'aeroporto alle nove. I must be at the airport at nine. Scendiamo alla prossima fermata. We get off at the next stop. We also use the Italian preposition a when talking about distances. For example, Abito a tre chilometri da qui. I live three kilometers away from here. 
Roma è a due ore di distanza in macchina. Rome is two hours away by car. We also use the preposition a with nouns to tell you when. For example, a volte vado al mare. At times or sometimes I go to the beach. Alla fine abbiamo deciso di trasferirci in Brasile. In the end or finally we decided to move to Brazil. We also use it with times and festivals. For example, Ci vediamo stasera alle 8. See you tonight at 8 o'clock. Pranzo a mezzogiorno. I have lunch at noon or midday. A Pasqua mangiamo le uova di cioccolato. At Easter we eat chocolate eggs. A che ora apre? What time does it open? We also use the preposition a with months to mean in. For example, Sono nata a dicembre. I was born in December. We use it with nouns to tell you how something is done. For example, Vado al lavoro a piedi. I go to work on foot. L'ho fatto a mano. I made it by hand. We also use this preposition when talking about flavors. For example, Un gelato alla fragola. A strawberry ice cream. Una torta al cioccolato. A chocolate cake. We also use it with nouns and pronouns after some verbs, including L'ho dato a Eleonora. I gave it to Eleonora. Piace a me, ma a mio fratello no. I like it, but my brother doesn't. Have you downloaded your free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson? Make sure you do, because we're about to look at the preposition di. Now, the preposition di is used when talking about who or what something belongs to. For example, il nome del parco. The name of the park. Di chi è? Whose is it? Literally, of who is it? We also use the preposition di to refer to the person who made something. For example, un quadro di Caravaggio. A painting by Caravaggio. Un film di Fellini. A Fellini film or a film by Fellini. We also use di to express ownership. Now in English, ownership is shown by adding an apostrophe s or an s apostrophe. For example, Michelle's pizza. In Italian, we need to change the word order and use the preposition di to translate this type of phrase. Take a look at these examples. La macchina di mio padre. My father's car. Literally, the car of my father. La casa dei nostri amici. Our friend's house. Now, D is used when there is a connection between two things. In English, when there is a connection between two things, one noun can be used in front of another. For example, the car keys, the kitchen door. In Italian, we need to change the word order again and use the preposition D to translate this kind of phrase. Take a look at these examples. Il tavolo della cucina. The kitchen table. Il periodo delle vacanze. The holiday season. The preposition di is also used when a noun such as cotton, silver, paper is used as an adjective. For example, Una maglietta di cotone. A cotton t-shirt. Una collana d'argento. A silver necklace. We also use the preposition di to express from. For example, È di Firenze. He's from Florence. Di dove sei? Where are you from? We also use di when referring to what something contains or what it is made of. For example, Un bicchiere di vino bianco. A glass of white wine. È fatto di legno. It's made of wood. Di is also used after certain numbers. For example, after milione and words for approximate numbers, such as migliaio, about a thousand, or una ventina, about twenty. Take a look at these examples. Ho vinto un milione di dollari. I won a million dollars. C'era un migliaio di persone al concerto. There was about a thousand people at the concert. Now, to learn more about Italian numbers and how to count to a billion, make sure you watch this video here.
the Italian preposition be is also used after certain verbs and adjectives. For example, Ti ricordi di Roberto? Do you remember Roberto? Sto tentando di concentrarmi. I'm trying to concentrate. Le arance sono ricche di vitamina C. Oranges are rich in vitamin C. Now, some Italian verbs are single words in English, but in Italian they are phrases ending with di, such as avere bisogno di, to need, avere voglia di, to want or to feel like. Here are some examples. Non ho bisogno di un taxi. I don't need a taxi. Non ho voglia di stare a casa. I don't want to stay at home. Di is also used with nouns to say when. For example, Di giovedì. On Thursdays. Di notte. At night. Di giorno. During the day. It's also used with seasons and parts of the day. For example, D'estate. In summer. D'inverno. In winter. It's also used to make comparisons, meaning then. For example, Lei è più alta di lui. She is taller than him. Sono più brava di lui. I'm better than him. As you can see, the can be used before a pronoun. For example, Senza di lei. Without her. Contro di te. Against you. Di is also used after a superlative. For example, Il più grande del mondo. The biggest in the world. Il migliore d'Italia. The best in Italy. Now, when di is combined with the definite article, it means some. Take a look at this example. Ci sono delle persone. There are some people. Vuoi dei biscotti? Do you want some biscuits or cookies? Di is also used with verbs in the infinitive form when it is used as a noun. For example, Hanno paura di volare. They are afraid of flying. Literally, they have fear of flying. Non ho voglia di lavorare. I don't feel like working. Now, there are many common expressions that you will often hear and use yourself. Now, the following expressions are formed by using the Italian preposition di with the infinitive verb. Notice how the preposition in English changes from one verb to the next. Let's take a look at some example sentences. Credo di sì. I think or believe so. Ho voglia di uscire stasera. I feel like going out tonight. Ha paura di volare. He or she is afraid of flying. Now, just as we saw with di, there are also several common expressions that use the preposition a plus the infinitive verb. Again, take note of how the preposition in English changes from one verb to the next. Here are some example sentences. Cominciamo a guardare il film tra cinque minuti. We will begin watching the film in five minutes. Maria impara a parlare l'italiano. Maria is learning to speak Italian. Domani vieni a trovarmi? Will you come to visit me tomorrow? Now let's take a look at how to use the Italian preposition da. Its first usage is with places to mean from. For example, A cinque chilometri da qui. Five kilometers from here. Viene da Palermo. He comes from Palermo. We use da when getting, jumping or falling off something or getting or falling out of something. For example, Tommaso è sceso dal treno. Tommaso got off the train. Sono cascato dal letto. I fell out of bed. Il gatto è saltato dal muro. The cat jumped off the wall. We also use da to say Da cima a fondo. From top to bottom. Lavoro dalle nove alle cinque. I work from nine to five o'clock. We also use da with andare, to go, to say you're going to a shop or to someone's house or to a workplace. For example, Vado dal giornalaio. I'm going to the newsstand. 
Andiamo da Marta? Shall we go to Marta's house? We also use da with essere, to be, to say you're at a shop or at someone's house or workplace. For example, Laura è dal parrucchiere. Laura is at the hairdressers. Sono da Francesca. I'm at Francesca's house. The Italian preposition da is used to talk about how long something has been happening. Use da to refer to periods of time, meaning for. For example, Vivo a Dublino da un anno. I've been living in Dublin for a year. Use da when referring to points in time, to mean since. Ti aspetto dalle quattro. I've been waiting for you since four o'clock. Attenzione! The present tense, not the past tense, is used in Italian to talk about what has been happening for a period or since a certain time. For example, È a Siena da martedì. He's been in Siena since Tuesday. To learn all Italian tenses, make sure you watch this video here. The Italian preposition da is also used with passive verbs and passive sentences to mean by. For example, È stata scolpita da Michelangelo. It's sculpted by Michelangelo. La pizza è stata fatta dal pizzaiolo. The pizza was made by the pizza maker. It's also used with verbs in the infinitive form when talking about things to do. For example, C'è molto da fare. There's lots to do. È un film da vedere. It's a film that you have to see. The Italian preposition da is also used to say what something is used for. For example, a racing car, an evening dress. In Italian, again, you change the word order and use da. For example, Mi sono comprato un nuovo paio di scarpe da corsa. I bought myself a new pair of running shoes. Non ho il costume da bagno. I haven't got a bathing suit. We also use da when describing someone or something. For example, Una ragazza dagli occhi verdi. A girl with green eyes. Un vestito da 200 euro. A dress that costs 200 euro. The Italian preposition da is used with nouns to mean as. For example, Da amico, devo dirti la verità. As a friend, I have to tell you the truth. Have you downloaded your Italian prepositions cheat sheet yet? Make sure you do. The link is in the description below. Now let's take a look at how to use the Italian preposition in. Now the preposition in is used with essere to mean in when you are talking about where something or someone is, except in the case of towns. For example, Vivete in Argentina? Do you live in Argentina? È nel cassetto. It's in the drawer. We also use the preposition in with andare, to go, to mean to, when you're talking about where someone or something is going to, except again in the cases of towns. For example, Vado in Spagna questo fine settimana. I'm going to Spain this weekend. È andata in ufficio. She's gone to the office. We also use it to mean into, when you're talking about getting into something or putting something into something. For example, Salgo in macchina. I'm getting into the car. I ladri sono penetrati in banca. The thieves entered or also penetrated the bank. Note that in is also used with verbs such as dividere, to divide, and tagliare, to cut. For example, L'ha tagliato in due. He cut it into two. We also use it to mean in with years, seasons, months and other expressions of time. For example, Nel 2020. In 2020. In autunno. In autumn or fall. In febbraio. In February. We also use in with periods of time to mean in. For example, L'ho fatto in sette mesi. I did it in seven months. Possiamo finirlo in 30 minuti. We can finish it in 30 minutes. We also use the Italian preposition in with modes of transport to mean by. For example, Andiamo in treno, in macchina, 
o in metro? Are we going by train, by car or by subway? We also use it to say how something is done. For example, A casa parliamo in italiano. At home, we speak in Italian. Now let's take a look at the Italian preposition su. Now the first usage of the preposition su is to mean on. For example, Il tuo telefonino è sul tavolo. Your mobile phone is on the table. Lo metto sulla sedia. I'll put it on the chair. C'è una porta in fondo sulla sinistra. There is a door at the bottom on the left. To say in the newspaper, we use sul. For example, L'hai letto sul giornale? Did you read it in the newspaper? We also use su with topics to mean about. For example, Un libro sull'antico Egitto. A book about ancient Egypt. We also use su to talk about ratios. For example, In otto casi su dieci. In eight cases out of ten. Due mesi su tre. Two months out of three. We also use the Italian preposition su with an article and a number to indicate an approximate amount. For example, È costato sui 300 euro. It cost around 300 euros. Lei è sulla trentina. She's about 30. Notice that there's also the suffix on trenta, the I-N-A. Have you downloaded your free PDF cheat sheet yet? Make sure you do, because we're now going to take a look at the Italian preposition per. Starting with its first usage, which means for. For example, Questo è per te. This is for you. È troppo difficile per lui. It's too difficult for him. When you are talking about how long you have been doing something, you use da. For example, Aspetto da cinque minuti. I've been waiting for, or also since, five minutes. We also use the Italian preposition per with destinations. For example, Il volo per Milano. The flight to Milan. Il treno per Verona. The train to Verona. Per is also used with verbs of movement to mean through. For example, I gatti sono entrati per la finestra. The cats entered through the window. Siamo passati per Catania. We went through Catania. Per is used to indicate how something is transported or communicated. For example, Per posta. By post. Per via aerea. By airmail. Per email. By email. Per ferrovia. By rail. Per telefono. By or on the phone. Attenzione! Note that per is not used when referring to means of transport for people. In is used instead. For example, In macchina. By car. The Italian preposition per is also used to explain the reason for something. For example, L'ho fatto per aiutarti. I did it to help you. Literally, I did it in order to help you. L'abbiamo fatto per ridere. We did it for a laugh. Sono andato là per abitudine. I went there out of habit. We also use per in some very common phrases, including Giorno per giorno. Day by day. Una. Uno per volta. One at a time. Cinque per due. Five times two. Now, as you come across new phrases in Italian, you'll start to recognize and remember these rules instinctively. In the meantime, to continue your learning and to help you practice, make sure you download your free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson, which you'll find a link to in the description below this video. If you enjoyed this lesson, then you'll love Intrepid Italian, my series of online self-paced video courses that break down everything you need to know about Italian using my unique 80-20 method. Just visit intrepiditalian.com for more details. To make sure you never miss a future lesson, hit the subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Until next time, thanks for watching. Un abbraccio. Ciao.